my notion of a book launch had to do with uh, having 20 global media cameras in a row and, and uh, you know, kind of, kind of a, a rollout with the drums and, uh, and, and the trumpets, which this is not. So this is a rollout for you. Uh, and I hope that what I, what I uh, do here is appropriate to the occasion because I'm, I'm really uh, uh, late, uh, late to this whole thing. But the core point is, here is a book that all of us are going to want to read, and hopefully uh, a book which will be read much more widely than that, including, at least in certain chapters by assignment of the instructors, students. Uh, this is a book uh, and it's, it's, it's very timely, it's a little overdue because we've been thinking about this for a while and the book took a long time to come to fruition, but it's, it is a book about China's approach to soft power. Joseph and I coined the term. Mm -hmm. The Chinese went around to all of us for years saying, please, what is this soft power? What does it mean? It's a little like responsible stakeholder, one of those terms coined by an American. And then the Chinese sent all their diplomats out and all their scholars out to ask the Americans what was meant by it. Uh, and, but in the case of soft power, uh, the Chinese really bit very hard. They really leapt onto this thing. Uh, and whether it was the State Council Information Office, for uh, courses at uh, Renan University and other places, soft power became one of those things that everybody, mm -hmm. everybody had to become aware of and ultimately that, that China had to develop as its greater power, its so-called comprehensive national power, increased so very rapidly. Mm -hmm. What is in this the volume, which I have not had a chance to read yet, is from the foreword, which I did read, the introduction, which I did read, a series of very well crafted uh, 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 essays on, the, on the, the Chinese debate itself on what soft power really is, and then on the application of soft power or the attempt to apply the concepts of soft power to China's realities around the world, both domestically and, and uh, internationally. And most of us. There are very, there are huge delicacies here. The United States, or at least some segments of American opinion, are obsessed now with what the Chinese, what, what the uh, these Americans call influence operations. And many of you are familiar with that. Uh, uh, Larry Diamond and Orville Shelburne had a study about a year ago through the Hoover Institution Press on Chinese influence operations in the United States, which became the kind of uh, locus classicus on the subject because it was very well produced and very well packaged and very well sold in the political and other and media communities. But it's out there in spades. Everybody, you know, everybody keeps saying everybody. There's a great concern in the United States now about the ways, subtle and unsubtle, that China seeks to in, intrude into the thinking processes, mm -hmm. into the brains of uh, people in other countries in order to get those people. It, it's, it's sort of like, you can, it, in some ways it's a very Confucian notion that instead of forcing people to do things, you 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 get them to come your way as the grass as, as the wind mm -hmm. uh, as the wind bends the grass toward you. Uh, but the point is that uh, the Chinese don't give us any help on this. Mm -hmm. uh, the the the, uh, the concern over influence operations reflects something very real about the way China approaches the world today. And from the Chinese standpoint, it seems to me. Uh, uh, a lot of what China does is is animated by their internalization of the conception of soft power that Joseph and I created. Uh, Stan Rosen, I think it's Stan, one, one of the early writers in the, in the book, raises the question of whether soft power is just a kind of a passing fancy, and that as the Chinese get to the point where they've got the economic and the military power to tell people what to do, uh, they can get to the point that is encapsulated in American verbiage by the famous American political phrase, get over it. In other words, it doesn't matter whether we make nice to you or not, we got the money, we got the arms, we got the markets, get over it. In which case, soft power may turn out to have been a sort of a phase in, in, in the development of China's so power. But, but just, just to stop here, I hope that Stan and, and Ian will, will say a few words about the book. It, it really is, I mean, I, I, we get a lot of books. I'm old enough to regret that the print is so small uh, we, we, because, you know, it's, it's not as bad as the Journal of Contemporary China, which is absolutely blinding to readers of my age. But, yeah, I mean, it, 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 it's going to be a serious read. This is not a casual 
uh, kind of a thing, mm -hmm. but uh, it, it should be at the forefront of reading lists for people interested in the way a huge and powerful nation uh, seeks to define the ways in which it expresses itself to audiences around mm -hmm. the world, uh, because that's pretty much what all of you in some way or other touch on here, even, even, even tossing aside for a minute the notion of pure creation as opposed to a creation aimed at a specific uh, audience result. Uh, most of you are involved in, in, in this, in this, this <clears throat> communicating from yourselves to others on, on, on questions that really matter. And, and that is certainly what uh, Joseph and I had in mind when he was patting America on the back and what the Chinese have been working very hard on. The, the irony is, I mean, here we're, we're looking at it today. We're looking at it today. Here we are, we're sitting here with the plate spreading around us, emanating, <laughs> emanating out of China. I mean, what happens to soft power when the world discovers yet again that the infectious diseases that threaten civilization are emanating from the villages mm -hmm. and, the, and the farms and the, pig, and the backyard pigsties markets that sell rats and lizards and, and wild animals in China. The, the, the attempt at soft power that the Chinese have worked so hard on and public diplomacy being a part of that is suddenly called into question by the, by the visceral, life-threatening uh, <clears throat> messages that seem to be emanating from China as this virus spreads out across the world. So we'll have to see how that plays out. But the book really is a good one. I mean, even just a glance, mm -hmm. a glance at various chapters. And I hope you will read it. I hope you'll use it with your students. And I hope you will introduce it into, into dialogues that transcend China. But because, of course, soft power is something which is not confined to the United States or China. In fact, 10 years from now, the whole term may be gone. We may never, we, we may never be, you know, terms of art come and go. And soft power may actually have outstayed its welcome already. But at this moment, uh, it's really a great book. I don't know whether that constitutes a rollout or not, because I don't know what a rollout is or a book launch. But Ying and Stan are here, and it'd be great if you have a few minutes, if each of you could come in a little on the enterprise and, and what, you think, uh, what you think its purposes and effects will be, and, and um, maybe even a little bit about the mountains and the obstacles you had to overcome to get this book together. Yeah, I think I'll let Stan do the talk. Oh, he's <laughs> deferring to stand. I want to grab this microphone. Come on. <laughs> That was entirely uh, ex uh, uh, off the top, by the way, and if it was stupid, please forgive me. I'm going to talk about the genesis of the book. It took too long, six years, I think. Five years. Uh, uh, just two quick things. Uh, partly related to the book, I think. Uh, one is that, in response to your uh, point earlier about the U.S. versus other countries, what we try to do is get as many chapters written by people in different areas of the world, you know, Latin America, and uh, co-author the Africa chapter. For a long story about that one. Yeah, yeah. But, but uh, so we did try to get not just an American perspective. One of the chapters I wrote was uh, looking at soft power in the era of Donald Trump and Xi Jinping, contrasting American and Chinese soft power, um, and whether the decline, the obvious decline in American soft power is benefiting China. Is it a zero sum game or not? But the, the other point I wanted to make is because I just got something in email today, and, and it relates to a lot of the discussion on fake news and. Um, this is from Pangolin and Cole, which you would know, but nobody else probably yeah, would. Actually, I never did try Pangolin. Yeah, but it, it's one of these, Bob and I are on a listserv on Chinese politics. It's the China ain't an awful listserv. Yeah. <clears throat> um, but he and I are on, on, on a more established listserv with about 2,000 diplomats and journalists and scholars and so on. Ying is on that list as well. Uh, but, but this thing on Pangolin and Cole, I won't mention the name of the person, later, but somebody posted something about um, how the coronavirus is actually originating at the Wuhan Institute of Virology, which is two miles away from that wet market in Wuhan. In fact, 
they have spent, this is from a conspiracy website, and Steve Bannon is involved in this, um, that the Chinese Communist Party is spreading the virus to basically restore the legitimacy in some way. I'm not sure how that's going to work. But it, it, it's really a strange kind of thing which is making the rounds. And this is an example of the effect of diminishing China's soft power uh, among certain communities. Uh, but that thing is, it, is you know, really, as you say, very, very dangerous. And it's not just the U.S. issue at that point. Uh, because it, plenty of conspiracy theorists in Europe as well. Yeah. Just three days ago, same rule again. Yeah, exactly. It's perfect. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's very scary. Oh, it's fine. I think I've said enough already. Well, thank you, sir. The bottom line is uh, go to your local uh, college bookstore and say, Do you have <laughs> soft power with Chinese characteristics? And then when they say no, you say, Well, you better get it now because it's.